Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to Shloka Day. Today, Shloka is Shloka number 5 of chapter 14. Satvam Rajastama Iti. Satvam Rajastama Iti. Gunaf Prakriti Sambhava. Gunaf Prakriti Sambhava. Nebhat Nanti Mahapaho. Nibhat nanti mahabaho. Dehe dehi namavyayam. Dehe dehi namavyayam. Word for word meaning, translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Shila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Shila Prabhupada Ki Ja. Satvam. Satvam. The mode of goodness. The mode of goodness. Rajaha. Rajaha. The mode of passion. The mode of passion. Tamaha. Tamaha. The mode of ignorance. The mode of ignorance. Iti. Iti. Thus. Thus. Gunaha. Gunaha. The qualities. The qualities. Prakriti. Prakriti. Material nature. Material nature. Sambhavaha. Sambhavaha. Produced of. Produced of Nibhad Nanti. Nibhad Nanti. Do condition. Do condition. Maha Baho. Maha Baho. O mighty armed one. O mighty armed one. Dehe. Dehe. In this body. In this body. Dehinam. Dehinam. The living entity. The living entity. Avyayam. Avyayam. Eternal. Eternal translation. Material nature consists of three modes. Material nature consists of three modes. Goodness, passion and ignorance. Goodness, passion and ignorance. When the eternal living entity when the eternal living entity comes in contact with nature comes in contact with nature O mighty armed Arjuna O mighty armed Arjuna he becomes conditioned by these modes. He becomes conditioned by these modes. <clears throat> so, we are in the subsection of the main section of how the soul is actually conditioned by the modes. So, from shlokas 5 to 9, how the modes actually bind the soul. The soul is experiencing conditioning because of these three gunas. Otherwise, the soul in its original position is always liberated. Prabhupada writes a very short purport. The Jivatma becomes conditioned by the Gunas. The living entity, because he is transcendental, has nothing to do with this material nature. The so Jivatma in its original position has nothing to do with Prakriti or these three Gunas. Still, because he has become conditioned by the material world, he is acting under the spell of the three modes of material nature. <clears throat> so whenever the Jivatma comes in contact with these three gunas, he becomes uh, captured under their influence. Because living entities have different kinds of bodies, in terms of the different aspects of nature, they are induced to act according to that nature. That means the three gunas not only influence the human being, it also influences all the other jivatmas because, for example, a tree is supposed to be in the mode of ignorance. Different animals are under the different influence of the different modes. But of all the jivatmas that experiences in intensity the impact of these three gunas definitely has to be a human being. Because we lead the most complicated and convoluted and confused lives compared to animals, other jivatmas. So <clears throat> we are propelled by these three gunas all the time in different directions. And because of that, we experience happiness and distress. So Prabhupada writes, this is the cause of the varieties of happiness and distress. 
So from another uh, uh, parampara, having explained that all life forms are born from Purush and Prakriti. So Purush, as the Lord says, impregnates Prakriti with Jivatmas. And then the Jivatmas take on different types of bodies based on their past karma and also their desires. Sri Krishna now explains in the next 14 verses how this Prakriti binds the soul. Although it is divine, its identification with the body ties it to material nature. The soul by itself is transcendental. That's what Prabhupada also explained. So even though it is transcendental, why is it not acting transcendental? Because of the three gunas. The material energy possess three gunas, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Hence, the body, mind, and intellect that are made from prakriti also possess these three modes. So, <clears throat> everything is influenced by the three modes. Our body, our mind, our intelligence. Consider the example of three color printing. If any one of the colors is released in excess by the machine on the paper, then the picture acquires a hue of that color. Similarly, Prakriti has the ink of the three colors. Based upon one's internal thoughts, the external circumstances, past samskars, and other factors, one or the other of these three modes become dominant for that person. And the mode that predominates creates its corresponding shade upon that person's personality. Hence, the soul is swayed by the influence of these dominating modes. Sri Krishna now describes the impact of these modes upon the living and being, which will come in the future shlokas. So His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu explains to us what are these three gunas. Modes are the subtle forces that shape the interactions between gross matter and consciousness. So our body, mind and intelligence is actually gross matter. It's not spirit. The only thing spirit is the soul. So modes are the subtle forces that shape the interaction between gross matter and consciousness through the route of subtle matter. Example, the route is the staircase. The modes are the forces that push us up or down that staircase. So different people react differently in different situations. Example, someone become angry, they shout. Someone drinks when they get angry. Other people, when they get angry, they want to find answers, so they seek wisdom. So these are examples of acting in passion, ignorance, and goodness. So even anger, <clears throat> if it is the route, it can take you up the stairs or down the stairs, depending on where you're already situated. Or there is a fire in a movie theater. Some people run and there could be a stampede. Some just freeze and they're not able to move. And some see a fire extinguisher and use it. <clears throat> so you can see different people respond differently to different situations because of the influence of the three gunas. So even a simple example of a fire in a movie theater, you could have different responses. Those different responses indicate that you're under the influence of one or the other guna. So in passion, one reacts without thinking much. So if you are under the influence of Rajabhan, you are so busy, you don't contemplate, you just react. So Rajogun means simply reaction. Ignorance, one cannot think. So if you are under the influence of Tamogun, you are like frozen. You, you are not able to make decisions. So you become a victim of this guna. And in goodness, one thinks, that means you have some time to contemplate 
and based on contemplation, you make decisions. So these differences are because people are in different modes. So it shapes the interaction between consciousness and gross matter. So you understand, although these three gunas are under the control of the Supreme Lord, nevertheless, they are actually interacting with gross matter, your body, mind, and intellect. And because the gross matter becomes preoccupied under the influence of the three gunas, the soul is not able to recognize its original position. Hence, Prabhupada frequently uses the word conditioned. Therefore, the jivatma becomes conditioned, which means that consciousness becomes contaminated by these three gunas. So the choice we have to make is which guna you want to be under the influence of. And of course, Krishna later on in this chapter will say, we have to go beyond the sattva gun because even sattva gun is a jail cell. So <clears throat> this is what the Lord is saying in this particular shloka. That these three gunas are what he calls prakriti. And when the jivatma comes in contact with these three gunas, they become conditioned. So they lose their original identity or they forget rather. They don't lose their original identity. They forget their original identity under the influence of these three gunas. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you'd like to join our classes every day, please check the details in the description section of this video. We look forward to serving you.